Hey, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are enjoying White Dwarf issue 491. They have the White Dwarf bunker inside two bunker scenarios on a handy card sheet. And hobby and painting inspiration for the Tau sets. Also Terminators, the history of the Space Marines tactical dreadnought armor and uh, the free weapons and abilities quick reference sheet for Warhammer 40k, which of course you could always print online um, from online. Um, but I like that. I'm, I'm going to pull that one out for sure. I've been playing some 40k practicing and getting it so that I can uh, do the next lesson of 40k which is going to be on mustering your army and um leading units and stuff like that stuff that you want to know before you actually play a game and maybe turn it into a bit of a little battle report something like that mm, i hope you've been enjoying lessons on how to play 10th edition 40k look at this guy look at guys go it's looking good by andy and those assassins. I'm looking for a uh, bodysuit to cosplay this assassin. But it's not easy to find. If you know good sources, you should let me know. I'm gonna need something like that, I suppose, as well. Okay. This will look great. This is a Vindicare a, a vi ever ever saw Kalidus and Caluxus assassins by Mattus Struff. I apologize if I wasn't even close to what your name was. Mm. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Contemptor Dreadnought's looking lovely. It's the model of the month. Look at that. So pretty. Pretty blue. What a lovely model by Mikhail. Michal Dmitra Siok. Painting question. Someone asked how to paint this realmscape terrain and it has been answered. Look at these guys. These are pretty chaos warriors by Fabian Gregian. Gregian? Nice, uh, must have taken a while. Do that cloak. Pretty, pretty guys. <laughs> Worlds of Warhammer, exploring how Warhammer collections come into being, collecting gaming sets. This set is the Nightmare Quest. Is this one? Which is, uh, I like that. I like the new. It's it. It's basically the exact same as the old one, but um, overgrown. Definitely from the original template, but overgrown. Oh, Octorious Terrain Set, Blood Bowl Stuff, setting your stage. <laughs> Access granted. The White Dwarf Bunker, the world's biggest and best Warhammer Club. Ooh, tokens. Mm. I haven't really looked into the bunker stuff. Combat Patrol League. Oh. Mm -hmm. Barely have enough to time to play anything as it is. Amidst the Maelstrom is a mission mission for the bunker. This, oh, bunker for Age of Sigmar. Cool. Battle of the Black Skies. Rumbling from below. Underworlds. Mm-hmm. If someone wants some rules, basic training, come up with a battle plan for your battle plan. Hmm. Neat. Basic training. What does this say? This section is all about understanding a battle plan and coming up with a plan for how to tackle it. No matter what army you collect or how you like to play, you will almost certainly end up playing a battle plan at some point and knowing how to achieve victory in it is pretty handy, I would agree with that. For our case study, we 
picked the Geomantic Pulse Battle Plan from the General's Handbook Pitch Battles of 2023-2024. Mm -hmm. So giving you some tactics. Um, help. Hobby Hangout. Painting the Terminators from Leviathan. Bella. With Lewis Collins. Painting Ultramarine stage by stage. Oh, here's the... Uh, little mission that you can pull out looking good looks good if you want to look at the is that the end result it is it it is see look good oh if you want to follow what he did it's in here i love basing Ooh, what's that base? That looks pretty. What is that base supposed to be? I don't know what that base is supposed to be. Is that like old papers? Is that what I'm seeing? But that's uh, that's pretty, 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 pretty. Showing some hobby hacks. Alternative color schemes. I'm doing Dark Angels, so that's, other than the red helmet, is going to be matching something from my Terminators. Terminators, I wonder how you did that. Uh, that's Tomb Keepers, yeah? Mortarian, Wraithbone Undercoat, Mortarian Grime, Mortarian Grime. All over Recess Wash for Targor Nightshade. Hmm, that is not how I did it. But it does look good. I will contemplate that. With Targor Rage Shade. Reckless Flesh Shade. Got Targor Rage Shade here somewhere. I'm going to do... So I have been working on my paint scheme for the Dark Angels. There's three different paint schemes the Dark Angels need to have. And um, I'm going to do a video of all three at the same time, once it's fully decided on. All right, Satellite Ump League. What is this? Leaders and heroes and clubs, news from around the world. People from around the world, how cute. That's nice. This issue, we head over to Warwickshire in order to take a look at the Etone College Warhammer Club, which was set up by the staff at the school, how nice. That sounds pretty great. A Warhammer club for kids, that's awesome. Warhammer Studios Leaders and Heroes. This month's painting challenge is leaders and heroes and the eager hobbyists of the Warhammer studio dug out their brushes to paint new warlords, generals, and champions. Here are the leaders of the pack. Sam Pearson, a fungal uh, cave shaman, Grave is Captain by Harry Feeney Barrett. Ooh, Ephrael Stern looking good. <laughs> I like the alternative hairstyle. Knight of Shrouds. Lord Karkadrak. Karkadrak. Cool. Apothecary with a black. Oh, it must be... Is it for... Dark Angels? Or something. Apothecary by Pete McCullen. Blood Pelt Hunter. Oh, that fella. Yeah, by Jess Beckham. Interesting way to go with the green on this. On that um, cloak. Some cool looking models. Uh, your leaders and heroes. It's not just members of the studio who have been painting characters. Readers across the world have sent in us pictures. How nice. Ooh. Achelian King by Aliz Alessio Pizzo. Like that. Look at that pillar. That is nice. I enjoy the color scheme on your steed. 
Brute Gilliman looking pretty epic with his colouring. What a very pretty Brute Gilliman. So nicely done by Andrea Zekilo. So nice. Some black legion armor down on the bottom. What a nice model. That's impressive. Lord of Peritant and Griffhound by Amy Snugs. Love the little Griffhound um, pattern on her back. Very pretty. Mm, I like the shading that was done on the cloak too. Weird Knob Shaman by Ian Hanrium. That's cool. Very nice done glowing eyes too. Ooh. Uh Autark by Kartik Raman. Oh, I like I like the look of that. I like the the uh, head that they chose for the Autark. Pretty. That's pretty too. Morathi by Erin Folly. Pretty wings. Very neat looking way to paint that. I like that too. Emperor's Champion by Benedict Steck. Looking pretty. Very pretty. A Scorpec Lord by Rup Pandya. What an interesting looking Scorpec Lord. I like that a lot. He looks great. It's like an uh, apocalypse style Scorpic Lord to me. Royal Warden by Alex Gebert. Tidy. Tidy job. Very pretty way that they did the glowing effects. Radikar the Beast by Katarzyna Karen? Cool. Like that blood effect there. So tiny. <laughs> These guys look like they are having a time. They are so pleased with themselves. Very cool looking model. Really nicely colored, I think. Hmm. The Eternal War for the Conquest of the Mortal Realm. The formation, upon the formation of and remit of the Grand Conclaves. Of the free city of Hammerhall. Ark Arcana. A Grand Conclave rules, uh, a Grand Conclave rules each of the free cities. Yeah. This is Hammerhall, is it? Interesting. Some lore, I guess. Oh, and people. Oh, so this is a conclave. Uh, Sebastian Mene Mench, Master Patriarch. Right, I am having trouble reading. Catrick, the Gion, Prime Commander, Zane, Dolores, the Hidden Hand, Nadian. Greenspur, Matriarch, Gyranus, Drobthorn, Tronson, High Artillerist, Elareth, Vine, the Supreme Pontifer. I hope I'm not the only one having trouble reading what in the world that says. Pontifex. <laughs> oh, Vix. Vinx. I see. Cool, so it is lore. Rules of engagement. The hunt for the hook. How lore influences rules. Hmm. By Luis Aguilar. Rules of engagement. Okay. Chatting about stuff. 
and how they try to keep the rules somewhat in par with the lore. Parallel to the lore. Celestial Enlightenment. The studio illustrators talk about the art of the Seraphon, which are looking gorgeous. All my Seraphon have been primed. I'm still figuring out the color scheme. But they're looking kind of good. Uh, illumination. It's such nice art. Pretty. Oh. <laughs> You know what? He looks actually, he looks pretty good that way. Look at that. All this lovely lore. Ooh, it's art. You get to hear it, see the artist's names. Opposite, Agridon Lancer by Mark Holmes. Bastilladons by Mark Holmes. Mark Holmes. You are one swell artist. Thomas Elliot. Does the Slant Star Master really like that work? I really like that. What a great artist. Nuala Kinraid. That's their ship. Oh my gosh. A Seraphim Temple Vessel. And the Croxagore by Catherine O'Connor, which I also really like. Oh, I can Skaven. Nice. Who are you by? Slan Star Master by Alex Boyd. Fun. Look at that. Uh, Raptodon Charger by Mark Holmes. Mark Holmes again. Doing lovely work. Love the slight look of the temple in the background. Love that. That was so much fun. I love looking at artwork. Warhammer artwork and knowing who's behind it. All right. Harbingers of War. Ah, the Grimhold Exile. That's the newest model from Fire Slayers. Nice painting of him. Hmm. Um, is this going to be about all of them? Yes, yes. The Harbinger of Decay. All of the new ones. That looks really nice, doesn't it? Really like how you did the, that base. By Carlotta Rossi. Mm. No, the model. Carlotta Rossi did the concept art. The David Weiselink. As the mock-up designer, then myself putting it all together. Jess Goodwin. Myself. Nick. Oh, I'm going to have to read about this. Designed by Nick Ho. While well, the emissary of chaos is the harbinger. Sculpted by Maxime Pastoral. The Marrow Scroll Herald designed by Christian Hardy. And Rabble Rouser, created by Paolo, Feb, pa, Paolo Fabian, Fabiani. So this is Maxime. Maxime Pastoral. And Carolotti Rossi. And David. And Jess. Oh, Jess Goodwin sculpted the original, the classic Herald of Nurgle that inspired this harbinger. Hmm. Offer device along the way, how nice. That's great. Background of how these were created. I love this little guy, and I very much like how you can completely remove his helmet to paint him and then put it on after. Super nice. That's fun. It's great fun. Turn of the wheel. Correspondence from the front lines of a Dawnbringer Crusade. I am not going to attempt to try and read that. Mm. Not today, anyway. Your loving son, Edric. Dear mother. Oh my gosh. It's, it's to a mother. Okay, I'll read that later. I will read that later. Oh no. Multiple things from sons to mothers. 
that's, that's not gonna make me sad. Might and madness. Army, arm yourselves with killing blades. This article includes rules and and background for two war cry war bands, the Stormcast Eternals, known as the Questor Soul Sworn, and the Royal Beast Players who hail from the Flesh Eater Court. So that would be the Nightmare Quest. And it has the rules within it. How handy. So instead of getting the Nightmare Quest, um, because the Questor Soul Sworn and these two war bands are now out that you can get alone, here are the rules for it. Available in your white tour. Pretty sure it was Nightmare Quest. Yeah, it wasn't Blood Hunt. I think it was Nightmare Quest. La 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 la. Huh? This is not the rules for it. This is extra rules. Over the next few pages, you'll find a trio of quests for each warband. A selection of lesser artifacts and artifacts of power, new heroic traits, an encampment location, background tables, name generators. Now all you need to do is decide whether you're crusading knights, whether you're crusading knights on a noble quest, or deranged cannibals who think they're crusading knights on a noble quest. Huh. Rules and background. When picking a warband from the Questor Soul Sworn faction, the following rules replace the four. Oh, right, I remember that. You can scoot them in with other people, if I'm recalling correctly. Okay, so this is sending them on quests, so not the rules per se. But to send them on a quest, if you already have the rules. Hmm. <laughs> There's the rules for this guy, which you could use with this guy or the terrain piece that comes alone. Which is always nice. Is that a new one or is that an old one? If you are using a train map with the Realm Shaper engine rune mark, there are special rules for the Realm Shaper engine which are presented below. In addition, if you're using a map with a Gnarlwood rune mark, there are additional special rules in War Cry Rot and Ruin. If you're using the alternative uh, terrain rules, you can agree with your opponent if you wish to use these special rules. Yep, 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 yep. yep. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Bum, 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 a tale for warlords. Hmm, who is fighting today? The Gore Forged. Hmm. World Eater. Look at all those skulls. Does he have skull scenery? He does have skull scenery. I like that. The Conclave of Progress. Ah, that's a... Uh, dwarves. Sagittarius, I believe, have finally restocked everywhere. Well, temporarily at least. Look at that fella. Oh my goodness. He's funky. He's a demon prince of Nurgle. I really like the uh, splatter effect on the axe. He looks good. Where that head isn't the one that comes with the demon prince, is it? His head is the Nurgle aligned one from the Demon Prince kit. Oh, it is. I guess I haven't really looked at it that closely, but it looks good. It looks like it fits. Nurgle. Death Guard. And Operation Argentis. You have a custom built fella. I 
Anthems of Krieg? I don't see any Krieg. Hmm. Tadia stands. This cork chassis is based on the Chimera kit with sheets of plastic card cut to size to cover where the track sections usually go. Oh. I then built some axi axles from the Cargo 8 Ridge Hauler trailer, where those big wheels came from, and mounted the wheels and mud guards onto the hull. The stowage came from the Cargo 8 kit and from my various Imperial kits. And my, I like that. Look at all that. Where are you supposed to be? Right from the start, do, 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 I decided to create wheeled chimeras. Inspired by the more unusual vehicles described in Blackberry novels, and by the models that were featured in White Dwarf and the Citadel Journal many, many years ago. I like them. I like that. I think it looks good. I need to see it painted now. I see it painted. I bet it'll look fantastic painted. It fits right in. Nice. Nice. Tau steps. Oh, right. We're going to get some painting ideas. Firesight looking great. V8 battlesuit of the Sassia set. Looks good. Hmm. Right. When I do my how crisis battle suits. I'm gonna have to do something so they don't have their fly bases. Wait, they don't normally have fly bases. He added a fly base. Huh? Mm -hmm. Farsight Conclaves by Ashley Reed. Looking good. Oh, all of that. Do you see all those big guys in the back? Ooh, cool. That all looks really nice. Those little stealth guys in the dark. I read his novels too, and they would inspire you to do it. I'm, I'd be doing um, the Farsight enclaves too. I understand. Dianoi Hunter Cotter by Dan Harden. Just finished the Shadow Sun Pale Hunter? Patient Hunter. And that was an interesting, <laughs> that was an interesting book too. I really like this look too. So cold. I don't think I could do anything cold after all because I like warm. Talper, oh, that was by Dan Harden, and I think I missed a page. I did. Ooh. Ooh. Yellow. Nice. Busy B. Stephen Kopp. The Quartile Defense Force. Hmm. I feel like this took a while. I see a lot of lining, a lot of line work and edging. Very cool. <laughs> I like, I like that the ethereal has a uh, helmet on. Good. Must keep them safe. Task Force Kovash. By Chris Drew. I like that. Camo. Camo Tau. Interesting. <laughs> TX4 Piranha by Josh Noy. Let's see the wear effects he has going on on that. That's pretty cute.
pretty teal. That's Sotek green and Baharath blue. Strike Team by Callum McPherson, which is pretty. Did you see the highlighting he did on his little every little um eyes perfectly done lens i mean pathfinders and ethereal by danny moody i do like how you did your pale skin on that ethereal looks really nice i guess if i was doing farsight there'd be no ethereals would there be lore wise She doesn't have any ethereals either. She understands. Stealth Team Diorama. Pretty. I think that was pretty stealth team. Oh, I like that they're coming out of stealth and becoming purple. Such a pretty look. Oh, it has the purple armor and how she did it. It's a very pretty purple, I think. I'm going to look through that. Might use that by John Bell. I really like your purple, John Bell. I think I'm going to take your your color scheme and put something in purple using it because it's very pretty. Negotiations by Ashley Reed. Oh. Hero fist versus the Tau. All right, we like this. What a cute diorama. Dark Strider by James Bragg. Hydra Fireblade by Luke Blick. If you look closely, this very aged for, um, green, it looks good. I like all the highlighting done on this. Very tidy, very tidy. Luke Blick. That white helm looks really nice with the rest of it. Ooh, another stealth. Coming out of stealth. We're going into stealth, possibly. I like this. This look. Is it on the side of the beach, perhaps? Ghost keel. Going through a color transition near water. Oh, that's right. What a nice job. Connor will be. I'm a big fan of the uh, coming out or going into stealth. A stealth Commander by Andrew Paley. A commander shadow sun but he decided to do a guy commander <clears throat> well it's looking lovely nice aged rock and base pretty oh my gosh all of these tau things are so nice that is an interesting color scheme look at all that aged metal Looks good and works so nicely with what you did with um, these basilica, um, uh, well, those things. I just think of the basilica because I did a basilica with them. I don't remember what they're actually from. <laughs> Administratum terrain. Uh, Ghost Keel by Andy Barlow. I like that. I like that a lot. Looks somewhere between leather and uh, bronze. Super pretty. Commander by Luke Mannering. Wow, this fellow has had his suit on for a long time. Quite the battle he went through. So much aging. What in the world is going on there? Create a random. An energy blade. How interesting. Huh. Cool. This guy's big. Got all that little little wear designs. Really nicely done, I think. So nice. 
Storm Surge by Kyla McPherson. Oh, look at all that wear. All looks really naturally weared down as well. Super nicely done. I am, I've never faced one of these guys before. I am very curious what it would be to face one. I'm going to have to read its stats for 10th edition. See what, what, it, what it's like. Breach your team and Fireblade by Matt Holland. Looks like they've been in their suits for a while too without it being repainted. They're in it for the long haul. Ah, Farsight Enclaves. She's standing on a piece of Black Legion armor. I like this, what you did there. I think it looks great. Nice customized model. Commander Case by Ashley Reed. Oh. In the narrative of the Tau, there are three main heroes of the Empire. Shadow Sun, Farsight, and Case. There's currently no model for Case, so I decided to convert my own. I used a Tau Commander and a Tau Stealth Set stealth suits for the conversion. I cut up the helmets of the stealth suits to create the curved shoulder pads and breastplate. While the commander kit provided the legs, body, and jetpack for the helmet, I used a Tau tracker support system and added on an aerial to the back. Well, I think you did great. It looks perfectly natural, as if Games Workshop made it. I think that's really nice. Commander by Martin Matios. like that. Looks like some airbrushing or dry brushing going on. Definitely some airbrushing. I really like the uh, contrast you've got going on. Looks great. Pretty, super pretty. Really pretty. Ghost Keel by Alan Jakupovic. Jakupovic. I like that little Tau guy on there. Little fire warrior on with him. Is he looking up? Maybe. My Ghost Keel from the Furios. Furios? Set is on a reconnaissance mo mission in on a swampy jungle planet, hence the dark green camouflage with grey markings. Well, it looks great. He did a nice job there. Um, the pilot has emerged from his... Oh, that's what's happened. That's why it's up. Uh, because he's not in the suit. He's standing right there looking out. That is great. I love that. Crux Terminatus, the Shield of Angels. Iterated. Ah, right. And here is the rules referent. All page references on the sheet relate to the page numbering system used within the Warhammer 40k core rules. Well, thank you for that. Contains one toy item. <laughs> um, yeah, this is really nice. Of course, you can print it out yourself, but this is done. So it has all of the uh, the various. Lone Operative, Leader, Scouts, Hover, Infiltrators, Deep Strike, Feel No Pain, Fights First. And then on the other side, it has all of the various um, weapon abilities that eventually you'll know off by heart. But right now you don't. So you're like, what did Lethal Hits do again? Oh, it... A critical hit automatically wounds the target. What's Melta again? Oh, um, um, Melta is increase the damage by X when targeting units within half range. Torrent, torrent, I remember. Sustained hits, done the st sustained hits enough. Rapid fire, it's the same as last time. So that was pretty, assault. assault is pretty straightforward, but some of these new ones are like, what was it again? I've got most of these remembered. Extra attacks is pretty straightforward too. Devastating wounds and lethal hits are probably the ones that I'm like, what is that there again? Twin linked, I'm good on. Got most of these now. Precision, I'm good. Heavy. Yeah. 
but still it's nice to have particularly if you're teaching someone else to play you're just like here take this I'm gonna take it out put it on my table and um the previous one this one is issue 491 the previous one which is 490 actually had uh, a little a little insert about yay big of all the stratagems definitely nice to have the universal stratagems out as well come to me come to me come to me I take all of the aids, all of the aids to make games faster and you don't have to look things up. Okay. What is this? The power armor worn by the warriors of the Adeptus Vistardis. Um, right. It's all the chatter about the development of it, which I am absolutely going to read through. Not at the moment, because I'm enjoying the art, but I am going to. I always enjoy that, though I probably already read it somewhere because I like reading that but I'm gonna read it again <laughs> born of war over the next few pages we explore some examples of the iconog iconography and heraldry worn by the inducti squads being the older this is followed by gallery uh, by gallery of examples by a gallery of example units painted by the members of the studio I get all that Heraldry and iconography. Iconography. In general, inductee bore the same pan panoply as their parent legion, but it was not unusual for their status to be marked out in some manner, such as different colored helms, stripes, or iconography. I've only read that word. Never heard it. Many legions utilize specific symbols to denote squads of inductee often in place of a legion icon which many inductee were not granted the right to bear well it's a nice metal distracted by the shininess it's pretty too <laughs> horse heresy stuff emperor's children by graham watson looking lovely in their purple i think the purple is much nicer than the pink iron warriors by chris Walton. I like that age steel kind of look. White Scars by Rob Cruci, looking bright white, only temporarily before they're shot to pieces. Well, with their swords, they're gonna be covered in blood. Space Wolves by James Karsh, back when Space Wolves was basically Space Gr Wolf Grey. Oh, you beakies. You look so cute. Can't take the beakies there, seriously. I suppose you'd be able to take them seriously if they stood eight feet above you, or seven feet. Eight feet, I guess, with all their stuff on. You'd take them seriously then. But, oh, this will look really nice. Imperial Fist by Ben Webb. Like the white helms of them. A darker metal, metallic kind of look. To him, Night Lords. Night Lords looking lovely. Nice blue chosen, shiny. Blood Angels by Chris Drew. With those t power fist lightning talons, I guess. Look good. They look good. Iron Hands by James Gallagher. Hmm, I like what you did. Uh... I like the random. I like the random razor wire. Ah. ah, that's it. The Forge Bowl continues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The forge bowl. Oh, it's like a battle report. Oh, show it up then. I will 
admire that blue. And then I'll go on. Dun, 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 dun. The Light of the Emperor. The Ultramarines Battle the Great Devourer. In the depths of space, we got fiction by Darius Inks. Luco Voltis, apothecary biologist of the Ultramarines First Company, set to work. It's not going to be good whatever he's doing then. Haha, <laughs> he opened the man's head using the autopsy saw. I knew it. I'm going to read that later. Okay. Inside the studio, painting, modeling, and gaming from the very heart of the hobby. Hmm. That is a quite the bright looking beetle Alariel has. Flaming beetle. Wow. Those bugs are flaming red too. It's just interesting choice. Versus some lovely looking, uh, what's our bone reapers? Order, sir. The answer is then. Here are a few attempts at the this issue's tactical situ at this issue's tactical situation by members of the White Dwarf team, followed by the best options for success. Oh, neat. <laughs> Hobby Bingo. Looking good, Lyle Lowry. Iron Warriors by Andrew King. Nice um, warning stripes. Hazard stripes. Dark Reapers by Matt Hudson. Oh, old fashioned Dark Reapers? I think so. I think these are original Dark Reapers. Are they? Feels like they're their original Dark Reapers. Before the reprinted ones. Next issue has more combat patrol action. Next issue is on sale the 15th of September. Alrighty, we've got some Pascoil against Fire Slayers. Oh, wait, those look creepy. Oh, it's the um, new malls versus new regiments of renown versus each other on the battlefield. Looking good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! Thank you very much to the patrons and YouTube members, particularly now that I'm getting more into cosplay because all of your support really helps me. I appreciate you a lot. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Oh, what a beast. I would choose, yeah, I, I, would, I would choose this. I choose this one, I think, between the two of them. I would choose this one and because it's more versatile, depending on the opponent and where I want to be. Shorter range, sure, but this is, that's enough range. That'll blast everything out. Such an anti t infantry thing, too. Nice. You can have three storm searches. Six objective control. Obliterating everything that could have more objective control than you. Yeah, you could do it. Where am I going? I have uh, I've, I already have enough armies. I already have enough. I'm not doing three storm surge just to see what it would be like. <laughs>